You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guarantee. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. All right, good morning, everybody. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. It's uh, The sun is, is getting a little brighter as it starts to come over the horizon. I can see when I got here this morning that, uh, well, we see that little twilight that looks like we're trying to have the sunrise, but it will be summer before we know it. You need to start thinking about doing things, getting your car ready for the hot weather for a spring break right around the corner. Now, I don't know if we're going to have spring break or not, but I do know no matter what happens, whether we have spring break or not, the oh, you're traffic... Are calling spring break an event, not a weather event? Well, it can be a weather event. <laughs> See, I just consider spring break to be just something that happens every year. Well, it does. And it's worldwide. It doesn't... And because of my religion, so spring and Easter and all that. Well... But, um, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm thinking about the traffic that comes down here and people get stuck on the Jane Hathaway Bridge mm -hmm. trying to get across due to all the construction that's going, that's going to be taking place. There's going to be flyovers. There's going to be, they're making things change on 23rd Street and uh, 98 where they're doing it. So there's going to be traffic delays and they can only do a lot of this work on paving when the weather is a certain temperature and the ambient temperature is a certain time. A temperature they can put down asphalt correctly that's why they can't do it when it's real cold and yeah spring break is a perfect time like it is a great time for them to do that but it's also a great time for your car to overheat it's also a great time for your car to burn up the transmission or your air conditioning to fail that's why i'm asking people right now please start looking at things and have them looked at before you have a crisis the biggest thing i see that um, cars that come in here and we get them on a regular basis is the cars that come in here over 30,000 miles uh, for us to do a 30,000 mile inspection and change the fluids and make sure things are like they're supposed to be done on a regular routine basis they don't have problems they drive their cars 150 200,000 miles or more before they give them away to their uh, children or a relative or sell them and they don't have any problem. The biggest thing, the biggest expense that they have in the entire time they drive the cars is changing the fluids, changing the batteries, changing the belts and filters. That's about it. There's no transmission failures. There's no catastrophic uh, AC problems. There's no engine failures. If they do these things like they're supposed to, they get dependable, uh, I shouldn't say maintenance free, dependable, low maintenance vehicles. Now, that, does that mean they can go 100,000 miles without doing anything? No. Does that mean they can go 10,000 miles without doing anything? No. But it does mean about every five to 6,000 miles, they bring their vehicles in, we do an oil change, we go full synthetic oil. We do a 30,000 mile inspection every time someone brings in their vehicle. Everybody says, huh? You can't do a 20 minute oil change? No, there's no such thing as a 20 minute oil change at James Auto Center. Our oil changes take about an hour because we spend 30 to 45 minutes actually inspecting the vehicle from programming, updated programming. Do you have the latest, greatest programming on your car? We see cars come in every day without that. Without that, Had a car yesterday, 97 diesel. Complaint was when it's cold, it doesn't want to start. Sure enough, there's a reprogramming for this 97 diesel that never was done to allow this car to start in cold weather. Excuse me, truck to start in cold weather. Extended crank, uh, white smoke, all these things that were the problem when the car first cranks up. There was a reprogramming to take care of that. It needs to be done. And it's a 97. We're talking about a 20-year-old truck. Think about it. How many, truck, how many cars do you have? I shouldn't say how many cars you have. Uh, how many your vehicles on the average of around 10 years old? Let's say that's the average of uh, someone's vehicle. There's probably updates on it that'll make the car get better fuel mileage, shift better, uh, handle better. Oh, I shouldn't say handle better. Well, if you have electric steering, make them handle better. There's some cars out there that had some problems with electric steering at low speeds that weren't working quite right. They were, it wasn't quite enough power steering, so there was some reprogramming for it to take care of it. The same thing when it comes to uh, shifting, shift quality. We have some cars that shift too hard, take too long to shift. Or shift too soon, and there's some program, and it happens once the car gets about 50 to 100,000 miles on it. There's a reprogramming to take care of that. That's on General Motors and Fords, or downshift or drive line clunk when you're coming to a stop or taking off. There is some uh, reprogramming on General Motors uh, trucks for that. And yeah, there's a, just a, there's just a plethora of uh, reprograms, even on my hybrid, on my Prius. 
I haven't checked it lately, but the last, uh, about a year ago, I checked it six months ago, it's about time for an oil change. The last time I did check it, there was no updates on it, but before that, we probably had five updates on this vehicle, some 2004, that's what year it is. I think I had to do updates when I got it in 2007. I did updates in 2009, I've done updates in 2012, and I've done updates in 2014. There's no updates right now that I'm aware of um, on this vehicle, but they all the time change, so that's why, if you've had updates in your car last year, that doesn't mean that that's all the updates that needs to be done to it. You may have some other updates. These aren't from me. These are from the manufacturer. They come up with these updates. They're the ones that say, hey, you know, after the car hasn't been on the road for three, four, five, six, seven years, customers are complaining about this or complaining about that. And someone says, well, it's out of warranty after five years or whatever it is. Well, you know, if all they got to do is re, uh, retype a program and put some different code in it, They'll do that to improve the shift quality or whatever, to try to keep customer retention. That's what they're after. A matter of fact, that's, what they, that's why they tell people, look, we want you to you know, keep the car for a while, but after about 100,000 miles, get rid of the car, give it away, get someone else. You know, the reality is your car is not even close to being wore out at 100,000 miles if you take care of it. And when I say take care of it, that means you change the oil and filter. You change all the filters on it. You change all the fluids. What were you going to say, Anna Well, Marie? yeah, you were talking about, you know, your uh, annual or semi-annual right. maintenance and then your three-year or mm -hmm. five-year maintenance. Then we need to talk about the 10-year maintenance. Well, what would so you say? So many people don't don't get there and that's where you can get the second hundred thousand miles out of your car and i'm talking about the radio yeah you're absolutely right when a car gets 10 years old i know the people out there are going to say james i find that hard to believe when a car gets 10 years old or a truck gets 10 years old i don't care if it's a gasoline i don't care if it's diesel i don't care if it's a hybrid i don't care what it is think about getting rid of that radiator well why do i want to get rid of the radiator it's doing fine it's not overheating well if you wait till it overheats or you wait till you see the light you can throw away the car then that's why they're called idiot lights, because you feel like an idiot when it does come on and you didn't take care of it. The reality is a radiator should, in this part of the country, uh, if you live where it's a, more, less humidity, less humidity, you'll get more rid of more heat. Say you lived in Colorado, where Mark uh, Sarlo lives, and on a 70 degree day, or excuse me, let's say an 80 degree day with only 30% humidity outside, uh, in the car at operating temperature, you're going to get rid of about 50 degrees of heat. Yeah, lower the humidity, the more heat you're going to get rid of. But here down in Florida, where we have you know air you can wear, where we have an average uh, on a 80 degree day, we have around 70 to 80 percent humidity, which is normal for us down here. If you're, we're, we're looking for is a minimum of 30 degrees. That's on a used car. A brand new car that comes from the factory that we see on its first oil change, maybe its second oil change, they're getting rid of 45 and 50 degrees of heat. Now, that's how we know what they're supposed to look like. We see brand new cars coming here all the time and seeing them coming here for 36 years. And for about 34 of these 36 years, we've been shooting the upper hose and the lower hose of the radiator when the, where the car's sitting at idle with the cooling fans engaged, uh, you know, our electric fans blowing. And we've been noticing over the years that a new car gets rid of 45 to 50 degrees of heat. And yeah, and now I want to talk about that too. Okay. Because when a car radiator gets a little bit of age on it, the temperature starts to drop. When How it, much the difference? Yes, yes, rid of. yes. But then you actually can go even further than that, and you start gaining temperature. And what's happened then is you actually rest have a severe restriction in the flow of the radiator. Were well, you talking see? about where severe restriction, and we have a great big difference, like you know, 50, right, 65 like degrees? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have seen that too. Uh, and she's absolutely right. If you get one in, and the customer comes in saying, "Hey, my car seems to be running a little hotter than normal." And I go, okay, and we start checking it out, and we notice that we're not getting, we have, we have more than 30 degrees temperature difference. We have 50 or 60 degrees temperature difference, and we're going, wait a minute, how are we getting rid of so much heat? And this is the original radiator, and we look down inside it, and we see it's all clogged up. And what, what's happening is it's just got such a restriction. By the time it does get from this side of the radiator to this side of the radiator, it's been able to cool down quite a bit. But there's it's a lower amount of volume coming through there. There's not enough flow of air, flow of water, coolant coming through there. And it can be the same thing. Uh, well, I was going to say with air. I've seen it where air is restricted on cars, and when that happens, uh, they don't. Get, it just stays. The temperature stays the same. If you don't have enough air, if it's 190 degrees coming in here on this side, it'll be 190 degrees coming out here. 
the car still may not run very hot. It may run a few degrees hotter on the gauge that you may see, but there's a problem there. There's no reserve. You're actually, it's supposed to be, if it's 190 degrees, let's just say your engine's running 190 degrees. When it goes through the radiator, it's supposed to be a minimum of 170 degrees before it goes back. On the side that's 170 degrees, that's where your transmission cooler is. That's what cools your transmission down on the, on the outlet side of your radiator. So we've got this 190 degree water coolant that's coming over here and it's going across the radiator. Now it's cooled at least 30 degrees. That's where your transmission cooler is and it's coming in at 180, 170, somewhere in that, and it brings it down at least to 160, 170. If we can keep the temperature of the transmission below 170 degrees, we'll never tear that transmission up. I say never. Very, very We would very rarely tear up transmissions. This is the best way to say it. But uh, that's what, because it, it, it's heat. That's what tears transmissions up, heat. And not changing the fluid, and which comes first? Not changing the fluid, causing the problem, causing the heat, or the heat cause, it, it all works together. Don't push transmission fluid. I don't care if you've got transmission fluid that lasts forever. That's supposed to be you know, eternal transmission fluid, lifetime transmission fluid. There is no such thing as lifetime fluids. Yeah, I know your manufacturer says, these fluids are good for five years or 100,000 miles, or this fluid never needs to be changed. There's no such thing. It never needs to be changed while it's under warranty because it's good for that time period. What is your warranty? 36,000 miles? Maybe it's 60,000 miles. How long do you plan on keeping your car? 61,000 miles? Most people keep their cars well over 100,000 miles. Like I said, the average age of a car, I think we were looking at the other day, was around 12 years old on the average age of a car in America today. And the average price of a new car now is $25,500, up from 10 years ago of $19,000. So it's kind of amazing how things are out there. You know, that 2% inflation every year the Federal Reserve shoots for. So after a few years, you've lost 30 to 40% of the value of your money. But that's another story. Anyway, if you got a car question, give us a call at 850-763-0555. We've been doing this radio and TV show, well, uh, and um, television, radio, newspaper since 1998. Uh, we at James Auto Center saw there was a need to help professionalize the automotive industry and try to get everybody on the same page. That's one of the reasons we started putting the show together. We wanted to encourage shops to clean up their waiting room, get rid of the 1967 micro, uh, VW Microbus uh, sofa seat, and uh, clean up their office and paint things and make sure the bathrooms are clean and make sure that, uh, that we have a bathroom inspector so when people do come by, that bathroom is clean. And we have also found out that, what is it, 70% of the customers that come into our shop are female? Is that is that about right, Anna Marie? Well, and lately they've been bringing their husbands and boyfriends by, so. But, but they are, but most of our customers absolutely, are female. Absolutely. and We have a lot of women that are customers. We have a lot of men, men too, but. I think women predominantly. Well, the hand that rocks the cradle writes the checkbook. We've always known that, and they make the decisions, believe it or not. Uh, that's one of the things I found out being in business over here. I'll have a, a man bring in a, a, a car, and, he's, and I say, well, okay, do I call you on this? Well, call my wife first. And I said, okay, so we know who we need to call. That's the person that's making the decision on that. And sometimes we get people, well, just call me. And then we'll call them and say, I got to talk to my wife. So it's best to find out, you know, what's going on before you bring your car make in. Make sure but, everybody gets on the same Yeah, page. absolutely. Because that's one of the things. Make sure, Husbands, if you're going to bring your car in the shop, tell your wife. That's the worst thing we get is we call them up and the wife goes, I didn't tell him to bring that car to the shop. I go, oh, boy. You know, so please do us a favor. Do that for us. Hey, this is James Morris. We'll be right back. It's Tuesday morning, uh, 615. We'll be right back. James Auto Center. We fix it right, Garrett.